Hey folks, BQ here with a real quick disclaimer before the GFW report starts. I had a lot of technical difficulties recording this, so you're going to hear me go in and I had to ask a lot of questions over again in post-editing and in a lot of his answers you're going to hear a lot of cutting and popping and clicking. My apologies, but I still think you'll enjoy the report. Alright, what's up people? BQ back again with another GFW live report and this is going to be for the Saturday show over at Staten Island, New York. Staten Island. I was going to say Long Island. I knew that was wrong. So, um, <laughs> been, been chatting with Anthony here. He was at the show and, you know, just like I did Friday and I spoke with Kyle, we just talked about the energy of this show, the atmosphere, the crowd, all that good stuff. So, We've been chatting here a little bit, and you said you've been to a, a few TNA shows, right? Yeah, this would have this would be, I think my I went with my dad, and we were trying to figure out. I think this will be my eighth show. I think I did a few uh, Jersey Rec centers. They did. I did uh, a few Manhattan Center tapings when they were taping when they just got on Destination America, and. I did a few of the ballpark stadiums, and I traveled once to Florida. So I think adding it up between all that and Fridays and Saturdays, I think it's like my eighth show. So, so, uh, so you said you went with your dad to this one? Yeah, my dad's a, a lifelong wrestling fan. He grew up with it, and um, you know, we always every time he's in town, he's in Florida. So he's comes back and forth every time he's in town. If there's a wrestling show. We tried to go to it, and it just happened to be TNA was running shows Friday and Saturday, and I just happened to be around. So we took the ride out to Long Island, and then we currently live in Staten Island. So the ride to Staten Island was a hop and a skip, so it was it was actually very convenient. Good deal. I got Anthony on the line here. We met on Twitter the other day, and we've been uh, chopping it up about the company. And we're brother in arms. You know, I'm a, I'm a military yep. guy. I was a cop in the military. And you're a, a policeman out there, so that's uh, yeah, <laughs> that's that's really awesome. Um, well, thank you for your service too. And thank you for yours too. I'm sure we'll have some uh, really good conversations you. down the road about uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, about definitely. stuff that comes up in the media and all that. But um, <laughs> <laughs> so you did the meet and greet for this, right? Uh, for Friday I did. Oh, okay, for Friday. Saturday I just did a regular uh, general mission ticket and um. Just like Friday's caller, they do – TNA, I will say this. They do a really good job with their fan interactions. They – the setup they have on Friday and Saturday is kind of the setup I've been to every show. They always do the meet and greet. Usually when somebody comes – when the crowd comes in, when they let open the doors, there's usually a wrestler there to greet, and they'll do autographs and pictures – then they usually do an intermission, and then they do the end one. So it's they have a good like setup with what they do. And uh, I think Friday Saturday's opening, they had Moose and Eli Drake again doing it, doing the signing when the doors opened. Oh wow, that's cool. Yeah, I've been to several uh, Impact Zone tapings and a couple of pay per views and everything, and they've always been really cool. It's been a lot of fun interacting with the wrestlers and everything. So, uh, so I got to ask you then. So you went to both shows. Which one? Which one did you actually prefer between the two? Um, hmm. I like the outdoor setting, but I thought Friday's show had just a little bit more energy. I don't know if because it was a little bit smaller crowd, not by much, but I just think maybe it was the first show in a long time. People were a little hyped up. I think. Um, there was a lot of people doing the meet and greet at the Friday show. Saturday there was too, but I just felt maybe the the ballpark stadium kind of killed it a little bit because it was such a bigger venue to do, a sh you know. And um, I thought that I thought the Long Island, excuse me, had a had a little bit more energy. I think. All right. So you said the crowd was smaller on Friday than it was on Saturday. Yeah, not not by much. I I thought Saturday show had more. I 
I think had more people. I, I was kind of looking around and everything. I, I counted roughly, and I, I stand by the word, I, I say about 600 people was there at the Saturday show. As opposed to Friday, me and my dad looked around, and not to like be judging or nothing, but I think we thought of roughly about like 400 people for Friday show. There's been a lot of different reports that there was only like 200 people there. Yeah, I mean, that's. I think it's not a fair statement. I, I took pictures of when I got in just because I always like to take pictures of a setup of a ring. It's not fair for, I think, anybody to use an empty, it's like, oh, there's nobody here. I mean, a lot of them, you got to remember the Long Island show, it was like in a sport, like a kind of like a little bit of a sports rec center. So everybody was in and out. And during the meeting green, there was only so many people in there. And then I think right around maybe seven o'clock or something like that, the doors opened and they, you know, they waited till eight to do the, sh to do the student showcase. And so I think that wasn't a fair statement. I think, I think 400 people was, I, it looked, you know, it certainly felt like more, I think with the passion and the energy in the, in the place. And, you know, I think Saturday had definitely had an extra 200 people. I think I saw more people at this show, but again, it's, it's not a fair, you know, I don't think it was a fair statement to say it was only 200 people. I thought there was obviously a little bit more than that. Now for Saturday, there were some pictures circulating online, obviously before the show started where the seats around the ring looked like they were empty. And then I saw some pictures later where they looked like it were about 80 to 90% filled. Would you say the seats around the ring were, were pretty much filled? Yeah. On Saturday, I will say this. Saturday, yes. I thought they were filled up a lot more. 80 to 85%, I think, was filled up as opposed to um, Friday show. I, I felt um, – I sat on, on Friday show. I sat in the – I was in, like, the second row, I think. It was, like, second or third row. And behind me, there was a few empty spots around the area floating around, I think, as opposed to the Staten Island show. There was, I saw more people sitting around the ring. Now, I don't know if it's because I, me and my dad were talking about it. I think we kind of attributed it to Staten Island's a little bit more easier place to get to. Maybe you can, you know, you get people from Brooklyn, you get people, the ferries right over there, you know, you can get people from Manhattan. So I think more people traveled to this show. I think it took me from Staten Island to Long Island, it took me over two and a half hours just to get there on Friday and that's fighting like traffic and everything. I think Staten Island, there was a little bit more people there that traveled to the Saturday show. All right. So what's the difference between Staten Island and Long Island? I've been to New York twice, but it was years and years ago. And I know there were some people that were able to go to both shows or try to go both shows like yourself. So, you know, what's the distance between the two? Heading from Staten Island, it's, um, <clears throat> To Long Island, it could be anywhere between, depending on where you're going in Long Island, because Long Island is pretty deep or whatever. You're cutting through from Staten Island, you got to cut through, depending on what you take, you got to cut through Brooklyn and Queens. And, um, you know, you got to take the Brooklyn Queens Expressway, the BQE. Depending on what traffic is on Friday, you know, with summer being what it is, I left my house at 3.30 maybe 3.20, and I got to got to the Long Island venue at like 5.55. So it was a good portion of it. It was me in and out of traffic every now and then. So, I mean, I think, I think more, you know, I think the Friday show, there was more maybe Long Islanders and, you know, Queens people maybe. And then as opposed to the Staten Island show, it's just the ballpark is right next to the ferry. So, like I said, you're getting – it's just a hop and a skip, and the ferry ride is free. So you're getting people from Brooklyn. You get people from Queens. You get people from Manhattan, you know, and it's an easier venue to get to, I think. Sorry, my microphone cut out for this question. Um, but Kyle said on the Friday report that the merchandise appeared to be doing very well. Was it doing well on Saturday as well, and were they pushing the VIP passes? Yeah, I mean, he, um, they do, like, like I said, I, they kind of had the same setup from my first show on and off. They always, Jerry Borash always comes out and always does the, uh, you know, pushes the VIPs. They were pushing that on Saturday. Um, the merch tables, it was, it was selling. There was stuff selling. Um, the only thing I wish, obviously, it's a little bit, you know, it's still kind of new transition to have a little bit more, but, 
their shirts were selling. They had a lot of, they had moose shirts, they had alley shirts, they had uh, the dummy shirts were selling for Eli Jake, Eli Drake, excuse me. Um, what was I think really selling was the LAX shirts. Those were really going on Friday. There was about maybe about forty to fifty percent. I think a lot of people had the multicolored LAX shirt, which is like the blue, the green, the red one. Yeah, those were really going. And then on Saturday, I don't know if it's they just had them aside, but the only ones they were pushing were the black and gray ones, the black and silver ones. Those are the only ones I saw on the merch table. So what led me to believe, I guess, either they were sold out of them or they just maybe didn't bring enough. But that was a good sign. I think a lot of people had a lot of LAX shirts around. And I think the second shirt probably had to be, uh, believe it or not, was Moose. There was a few Moose shirts fine, you know, going around. On Friday, it was um, the meet and greet was um, Trevor Lee, Drago, Sienna with KM, uh, Fala Ba and Mario Bokova, and oh LAX with Loki. So um, all all guys were amazing. They were really nice, and uh, I have seen Fala Ba and Mario from uh, PW. Russell Pro and I try to go to the Jersey shows or Brooklyn shows whenever I can. So they were cool. I got to see them and uh, I've been a lifelong Ring of Honor fan. So to see Loki was pretty awesome too. So we spoke about that and obviously I'm a Lucha Underground fan a little bit. So I got to see Drago and that was cool. And then right when I was done with the meet and greet, I was getting ready to go to my seat and then Moose came out. So we met Moose, we met Eli Drake. Um, they were pushing those VIPs that for a certain price, it was like 50 bucks. You, uh, you meet Jeff Jarrett, EC3 and Lashley in the back uh, during intermission. Yeah. I mean, that wasn't a bad price it, for, for all three guys was, was good. And then on Saturday, um, I think the meet and greet was just about the same people. I think, I think maybe they might've added Ali and Braxton, but other than that, I think, um, they had the meet and greet, on Saturday, and then they had um, Moose and Drake and op Moose and Eli Drake um, opening, and then an intermission. Alley came out, and I got to meet. That's how I got to meet Alley. So, what they do at the end of the night? Because I know on Friday they did the picture, the photo ops with the winning team from the main event, and I guess they had a professional photographer there. Yeah, they um, again they they've been doing this since. 2010 which is like i think that's the first time i went the first photo op i did with my dad it was it was me and rob van dam i've done kurt angle i've done beer money and they do it at the end of the night where jb will come out and whoever the winning person is or winning team they'll say you know we're not ready to leave james storm got on the mic and was like who wants to have a party and jerry borash was like you know for 20 bucks as many people if you have like 10 people with you for 20 bucks, you jump in the ring and you get to take a picture with, uh, it was the same exact, um, style as Friday. It was more, it was John Hennigan and Moose and James Storm again. You know, yeah, that was, that was a little different. Cause that one had Moose, right. And then the night before had, uh, Moose was, Moose was in Friday show. The, the only substitute on Saturday was the heel team. Uh, I think it was on Friday, it was Lashley, Eli Drake, and EC3. And on Saturday, it was Lashley, EC3, and Loki. Eddie Edwards wasn't there? He wasn't there, actually. I was no, that's right. That's, yeah, that's right. I remember he posted he was on a, on yeah in Japan. But I think he was initially scheduled for it. That's yeah, why he I was, was thinking. scheduled for Friday. He was supposed to do, I think, a triple threat. And then on Saturday, he was supposed to be in the six man, but um, the main event. But then I think they uh, obviously they altered it around. But the only substitution on Friday to Saturday was just low key. Who was, uh, who was the most over with the crowd on Saturday when you went? Was it probably LAX for sure? LAX for sure. There was a lot of. Uh, you know, a lot of fan base, you know, throwing up the LAX and, you know, the shirts and a lot of people were bringing different flags. And I think if I had to give you like my top three, it was probably, well, I'll say I'll, I'll do top four, probably <laughs> uh, LAX, um, Eli Drake, 
Moose and EC3 probably. Not to say nobody else was bad. Everybody else, when Morrison came out, when John Hennigan came out, they uh, they went crazy for him and you know for Lashley. But I think a lot of people got into Moose doing the Moose chants and Eli Drake kind of got the crowd hyped up. And obviously, when LAX came out, maybe them being the local guys, they got a big uh, they got a big reaction. Oh, so you told me before we started talking here, before we hit the record button, that you talked to Allie a little bit. And I know that her and Braxton missed Friday's show. So what did she tell you? Yeah, she said uh, she, uh, my dad was talking to her and he asked her, he's like, oh, you know, we missed you at the show. And then I was right behind her. I was like, yeah, you know, we were looking forward to uh, meeting you. She said she had missed her flight. Um, I think it was like a connecting flight or something like that, or they just like missed it completely. And wherever they were, they had to. They ended up taking the flight late, but then it only got them to a certain spot. And they had to drive the rest of the way down, actually. So she apologized, and she was like, "I really wanted to be there," and but I think it was just like really bad, like flight trouble. Yeah, you know, I don't know if you you saw, but a similar thing happened to Lashley, and oh, no. I guess I don't know if it was for Friday. It was for Friday. He um. I guess he missed a flight too, but he was able to drive and make it right before the main event. Oh, wow. No, I had no <laughs> idea actually. So yeah, I guess that was a, kind of a reoccurring theme for them, but you know, it was cool that she was able to, or nice enough to apologize on. She made Saturday show, which was cool. I think that was a little bit of a help because the matches were from Friday to Saturday. They, you know, obviously with the addition of Allie and Braxton, they, um, they kind of altered it a little bit, you know, so, which is cool. Did you enjoy watching it? I mean, you kind of answered this a little bit earlier, but did you enjoy watching it in the ballpark? Or do you think that's – because the – I don't know if I want to call it the general consensus, but a lot of people are online are saying what a failure it is to do something at a ballpark. I mean, for you, for actually being there, what was the experience? This, this being my fourth ballpark, I did three with TNA and one with Ring of Honor. Um I love the ballpark stadium. I love the ballpark feeling. It's outdoors, especially during the summer. It's nice. It's, you know, do you get the same kind of sound and kind of atmosphere when you're indoors? No, because I feel like you're outdoors. You're kind of a little bit missing that. But I enjoyed going to the show, sitting in, you know, sitting in my seat, hanging out with my dad and watching the show outdoors. I think there's something fun about being outdoors. Um, you know, I I don't know. I mean, I think I thought it was a good show. I thought they they worked hard. It was fun, and I I mean, I like the ballpark stadium. It's hard to fill up. It's hard. You know, it's not it's not easy. But um, you know, I think if you have a good fan base there, I think you know you're you're okay. You know, I'm looking at a picture right now, and this is Falaba versus KM. Yes, and the um. It hasn't quite filled in yet, according to this picture. Was this was this match the opener? Yeah, that was the opener. It was um, it was it, I I don't know if you can consider that like I guess that would be the dark match because then they went from Falaba to KM and then they did the Creator Pro slash Wrestle Pro Student Showcase match, which I would have right. thought they would have done it the other way, but that's how they did it and that's how they did it on friday too which is kind of weird but yeah that was definitely a uh was the um was the opening match and i think what's kind of sometimes hurts it a little bit when the match opened up i think people were still signing meaning i Mm. think moose and eli drake were still doing so people were still waiting online for them so maybe people you know it doesn't it, that wasn't a fair shot because it was the first match and either people don't want to get up or didn't know that they were at the merch table or people were just sitting down so looking at that being the first match it kind of looks like nobody was there but to be you know be honest like they could have been people still could have been at the merch table and you know doing whatever getting their food and so that's that, you know. So what match did it start filling up? So Friday I was told around a third match, and so that's when it kind of started. Seats start filling up a little bit. Was that kind of about the same? Yeah, the third the third match would be like the uh, would be like the the main show. I think the like the startup, you know, um, 
match because then and the Creator Pro, Creator Pro was, you know, the student showcase was good. And then I think right after that match, I think JB came out and started hyping up the crowd, you know, and getting people and people, you know, started sitting down. And he started hyping up the, uh, the VIP uh, tickets and everything. And I think the opening match was, I'm trying to remember here, was it, I think it was Trevor Lee, I think. It was Trevor Lee and Mario Bokova, I think, for the – they came out and they – you know, Trevor Lee did his spiel and everything, which he was – he was another guy who was really over. A lot of a lot of Trevor Lee chants going on too. Yeah, that's what I heard. Um, Mario Bokova and, and uh, Falaba, they wrestled as baby faces, didn't they, for this? They did. They did, yeah. They wrestled uh, – Friday they wrestled LAX – and then, which was a was a good match. And then Saturday, they both wrestled as singles, and they were both uh, baby faces. Yeah, they uh, followed by went up against KM, and KM was playing the the heel. And then uh, Mario went up against Trevor Lee, and that was uh, you know he played the uh, the baby face there, and that was a that was a good match too. But back to that, Trevor Lee was getting a lot of chance. Interesting. Last question I have for you. Um, what was your favorite match on Saturday? Um, obviously, the main event was fun. I thought that was a really, they, you know, everybody did all their fun spots. And um, I got really excited seeing um, the tag team match. I thought it was really good. Having those guys in it, it was uh, LAX taking on Sanjay Dutt and uh, Drago. So that was a pretty... I thought, you know, all four guys are really, you know, are going to put their best effort in, and uh, they didn't disappoint, obviously. It was a good uh, it was a good match. All righty. Actually, I do have one more question for you. Tell me about the X Division title. What happened with this? I, I saw pictures. I guess Sanjay so, got it back, whatever. Yeah, the X – that was – that entertained uh, a lot of people. It entertained my dad, and uh, I thought it was great, actually. For the whole – between Friday and Saturday, they were – obviously, if you watch uh, Global Force Impact and you know what's going on with Trevor Lee and Sanjay and the title and everything, and um, I think Friday he had got it back, Sanjay, and then somewhere in – I think Sanjay came out or maybe after the match, Trevor Lee kind of snuck and took it or whatever. And then on Saturday, um, did he have the title? I think he he had the title, Trevor Lee. And then I think he was like the third match, just to say. I think Sanjay came out and took the title. And then, you know, obviously they went back and they finished up the rest of the uh, show. And I think after intermission, the tag match started. Sanjay was in the ring with the title, I believe. I think Trevor Lee came out, actually took the title, and I think what got everybody laughing and you know chuckling is when Trevor Lee took the title, he jumped the barricade, and he was running, literally, he ran all the way to the outfield, and he was running back and forth, and then he threw himself on the wall with the title, I guess, to climb it, but it was so steep, he couldn't. So then he ran back from the outfield all the way to home plate, but like somewhere between maybe like first base or so, he kind of got winded, and then so did Sanjay. So then they were both tired. And then Drago started chasing after them, and then it was Sanjay, Drago, and Trevor, and they ran all the way to the back, and that's how it uh, that bit ended or whatever. And I thought it was really fun. I mean, you know, we I laughed about it. There was tons of people laughing, and Trevor Lee is a uh, – he's, something, he's something special. He's a really good wrestler, and I think he's – kind of coming into his own with uh global force yeah we're starting to see his character come out a lot now yeah we weren't getting that before so he's really yeah he's really taken he's really taken to it and uh he did some fun things with uh the fans on friday and on saturday he got on the mic and told jb to introduce him as the uh, x division champion and <laughs> You know, everybody was booing him. He said he was leaving the state of New York, and it was it was a real he was a real um, fun guy to be around on you know on the weekend. And given that little bit with him running the baseball field, and everybody got out of their seats and were taking pictures, and all you see on the big screen is Trevor Lee running back and forth around 
with some really short shorts around the whole baseball field. So, because <laughs> he wears his short shorts, he likes those. <laughs> yeah, he does. He doesn't like a whole lot of uh, support. I always point it out on my show that his his uh, trunks are just like this thin nylon with no support whatsoever. I don't, I don't oh, know yeah. what that's all about. <laughs> so he's, uh, but yeah, he was. That was. I thought that was a fun little bit to kind of keep the TV storyline going you know coincide with the you know the live events which is fun so for you this this uh, saturday event was it a success to you oh yeah definitely i think um between friday and saturday i think you know not you know leaving atmosphere and fans and like how the stadium setups were each for venues but overall yeah i think it was a uh was a um it was a success. I got to send you some pictures, actually. They, uh, which was really cool. I forgot they did on Saturday. They gave out a free pack of cards. Oh yeah, yeah. Talk about that. Yeah, those were really cool, actually. My dad actually got Allie to sign her card, which is awesome. I think it was like a pack of five. I'll, uh, I'll send you some pictures after, whatever. And um, I think it was like, might have been her, LAX. I know my dad opened his. I think it's open mine. It was like a few main people, I think, or whatever. Um, maybe I think EC3, maybe Jeff Jarrett, and you got James like a pack. Storm, right? Yeah, James Storm, I think. And uh, sorry, um, yeah, and it was like a pack of five, and uh, it was cool. They gave it out to everybody at the, you know, when you first walked in, and um, it was it was a cool little thing. I think they to do that. It was, you know, I like baseball cards, and you know, that's kind of a fun thing. It was. It, they had like these, you know, the ballpark logo on it. So I guess I don't know if it was like an exclusive thing or whatever for the stat the Saturday show, but that was cool. And then, um, you know, merch, you know, every merch was going good, and the the fan interactions. There, uh, Ali had a huge line after, and you know, right around intermission, you know, they started. A lot of people were you know, getting to meet her. And if you bought her shirt, she would sign the shirt. It was, you know, I think it was, I think it was a success. You know, a lot of people, I didn't, I couldn't stay for Friday's show, uh, Fridays after the pitcher or whatever with the winning team because I had work that night. But Saturday I made it my business to uh, wait. And me and my dad got a nice picture with, you know, John Hennigan, Moose, and James Storm. So, yeah, I saw that on your Twitter. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really cool. I got to speak to him about Boone the Bounty Hunter, and uh, it was uh, – yeah, it was really nice. A lot of people stood for that, and the line went – you would think, oh, man, everybody's going to stay, and it's going to be the longest line. I mean, it went quick because people were there with a lot of people. So if you're with – some people were there with, like, six people, so they all jumped in the ring, took a picture. And so the line was moving, you know? Right, and, right. Um, I think another real, just to touch on a real quick point with um, Global Force. Global Force, um, they do these grab bags. I don't know if you, since you've been to the shows, you know it's like for twenty bucks you get four DVDs and a T-shirt. Right, right, right. Those were I, I bought a few of those. Those are actually selling really well too. They were granted they were older shows, but um, you know a lot of people were still on Friday. Those I saw a lot of people getting those, and on Saturday. I saw a few people with the grab bags as well. So I think between the sign, I think between the meet and greets, the signings, um, the LAX, and I say those are my top three shirts, the LAX, the Moose, and the dummy uh, Eli Drake shirts. Those are the three I saw mostly around the stadiums or the venues. And then between those and the grab bags, I thought, I, I thought, you know, hopefully it's a, it's a success for them because, you know, if they keep doing this, I ho hopefully I'd like to see more shows, not just in New York, but, you know, maybe do Pennsylvania, maybe do other spots. I think they can really carve a nice little niche and just keep it going. Absolutely. It sounds like they were able to monetize each pe each person very well that came to the door, not just not just the ticket they bought, but they were able to monetize everyone. And uh, that's really special about the cards because I've seen people on Twitter, like, I will pay top dollar for those cards. <laughs> yeah, Everybody no, wants those. Really, Everyone's very jealous. They were really cool, actually. Yeah, I thought it was awesome to do that. I, I Where did I see that? I thought I, I read it. Um, I don't know if it was in the local advance paper in Staten Island they said it, or I think they announced it online. I was like, oh, cool, you know. And then when I got it, um, 
I was, you know, I was looking at it and then Allie was doing her thing. And my dad was like, Oh, she's on, she was like the first card. And he was like, Oh, you know, I'm going to, he opened it up and he got a sign. And, uh, yeah, they were really, they were really nice looking. I think, um, what helps TNA is the global force is that, um, whether you don't pay for the, the big meet and greet, you're still walking away with a great experience. You know, you get to do the open, you know, they usually have somebody there, they have the intermission. And then if you don't want to do any of that, at best, you still have the end of the show where you could jump in the ring and take pictures with whoever the winning person or team is, you know, that's, that's a good experience. I saw a lot of people taking their kids up for that. And that was to me being a lifelong wrestling fan. And as a kid going to the shows, with my dad, I would have killed to you know jump in the ring and take pictures you know oh yeah yeah i was i did an indie show or i went to an indie show a couple of weeks ago with my kids and we uh we had a meet and greet with cody rhodes and then at intermission he yes. did the coat the inter the uh meet and greet inside the ring but we already got our photos and pictures and my kids were like man i want to get in the ring <laughs> yeah i, I mean, mean it's cool to be able to do that yeah the the allure of getting into the ring is so you know you, you're you know you watch it on tv you're sitting in the show in your seat and you're like i don't you know i think every kid imagines like man how cool would it be to just jump in the ring and touch the rope or you know and there was a lot of you know kids just jumping in the ring and you know they were like oh you're next and they were rolling in and you could tell that was hopefully you know I'm a grown man and <laughs> I'm a big yeah. kid. It was a special moment for me. So I can imagine, you know, for the kids who are growing up or whatever, and they have this cool picture and, um, you know, you leave with a really awesome experience and a great story. Most of all. Yeah, so, so please send me pictures of the cards. Um, I'll give you credit. I'll, I'll tag you on Twitter and everything. Oh, as yeah, I say no courtesy worries. of yeah, you, but of I, a lot of people really want to see what they look like. I've seen the alley one. I think I might've saw it on yours cause it was signed. Okay. Um, yeah. The picture I saw. But... You, yeah, definitely. I'll send. I'll send you some stuff tonight, and uh, I'll take front and back, and uh, I'll let you know what the uh, you know how they look like. Yeah, absolutely. I really appreciate you coming on, and uh, you know, contacted you on Twitter, found out you were there, and you're willing to come on. So I really appreciate it. No, thank, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it, and uh, I'm definitely just you know definitely start listening to the podcast now. I listen, you know, I'm trying to. Uh, get more into podcasting so uh definitely check it out so definitely you have a you have a fan now so definitely thank you for having me on cool uh, i look forward to that and uh you know like i talked to you off offline there i got i had a uh, my sienna interview today which was great and i got ali coming friday so i got good stuff coming up yeah definitely but excited all right folks thanks for tuning in again to the uh, gfw live report I'll be doing this every time that they hit the road. We'll find someone who was there, talk about the experience, and talk about the truth instead of the uh, nonsense that floats around on their cheats. Thanks for swinging by. This is BQ. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm out. Peace.